Hello, everybody. This is Brian Gardner. I'm a developer advocate for WP Engine. In today's workshop, I'm going to teach you just how easy it is to build a slide presentation using WordPress blocks and the Frost WordPress theme. Frost is a theme that we have here in-house at WP Engine, something I started two years ago. Uh, and so we use this uh, as a demonstration of what WordPress can do, mainly because Frost is equipped to sort of handle all of the WordPress core functionality. Uh, it's designed well from the perspective of working with the blocks that WordPress core has. And so everything you see here is using WordPress core, not even Gutenberg active, but WordPress core. So stable WordPress, uh, as well as the Frost WordPress theme and nothing else. So there's no tricks. There's no extra JavaScript. There's no plugins that are being sort of alongside of it. So everything you see here can be downloaded for free right now or tonight or tomorrow. And so when we do the replay, I'll put links to some of these things so you can grab uh, the tools that we've got and then uh, we'll go from there. So Sam's got, thank you, Sam, has the uh, link to Frost uh, in the sidebar there in the meeting chat. And so I'm going to show you uh, the first time I had kind of heard of the idea of building a slide presentation with blocks was actually uh, our former co uh, colleague, Nick Diego, did a WordCamp US presentation and he used the block editor. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty genius thing. And I didn't think to do it, but I knew it was very possible to do, uh, and especially with Frost. So I'm going to just open up a brand new page and just sort of methodically just go through. And it's literally a few steps, but I'll sort of um, pile some of these steps up so we can kind of see a couple of different sections of how this might look. Uh, and again, please use the, the sidebar, uh, the chat in the sidebar to ask questions along the way if I'm going too fast, if I've done something that doesn't make sense, or if you want a little bit of explanation, uh, I am more than happy to do that. So I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen and uh, hopefully we'll be on our way. All right, so I've got my screen shared. So uh, I just also want to make sure I can see the chat myself. Uh, somebody just do me a thumbs up in the sidebar if you can see my screen well. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I'm using local right now. This is our development tool, uh, WP Engine. And so I'm just going to spin this up uh, from scratch. And so uh, I'm going to build, you know, I don't know, maybe a sample five slide presentation. And it's going to go pretty easy because I'm going to start with a page called sample. I'm going to publish my page and we'll start there. So using Frost, this is now what we've got. So this is just a sample page. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the template because I want to kind of wipe out header and footer and all of that because this is going to be using uh, in Frost what's called a blank page template, which means there's literally nothing on the screen. So if I hit update and go back to that page, you'll literally see a white screen. Uh, that is by default for things like this. Uh, you can also use a blank page template if you wanted to sort of build like a link tree page. Uh, Frost has a pattern where you could easily import that. And so there's several uses, uh, or maybe even you want to just build a landing page from scratch. And so certain themes have the ability to just uh, allow you to use a blank template uh, to create whatever you want. And even if the theme doesn't, now with the capabilities of the site editor, you can go in and actually create your own uh, blank template and add that to the theme that's active regardless of what it is. So that being said, I'm going to go back here and what I generally do. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a slide and I want it to go full width left and right and span full height top and bottom. And so um, I generally always start by adding everything like kind of the group is my sort of de facto wrapper. And so first thing I'm going to do is add a group. And what I'm going to do with that group is I'm going to make it go full width just so that it spans left and right. Uh, and this is a little bit of a, I'll explain why I'm doing this here in a second. Uh, let me apply a background first. So background to the group, I'm gonna actually go in and use a gradient that Frost has. Uh, this is a primary color all the way up to um, the black that's in Frost. And so I generally kind of set these groups up. I'll just add some padding top and bottom just to kind of help make some things um, easier to see. And so we've got here the group. Uh, now, one thing when you have in WordPress uh, with the block theme, there's a thing called block gap. And what this does is there's like a gap that's defined by the theme that adds spacing in between elements that are or blocks that are grouped together. And so in the case of this, where if I were to have a bunch of groups stacked on top of each other, the block gap gets applied. So I generally will zero that out by adding a uh, top margin 
uh, just to make sure there's no sort of extra block gap above it. And so I will go here and just zero this out just to be safe. Now, I'm going to update this. We may not see anything here because there's nothing there, just the, the padding that comes with the uh, the group. Hey, Brian, just to pause you real quick, would you be yep. able to open up the list view as you're building this out? Uh, yeah, I'll kind of keep, I'll toggle it back and forth only because when list view gets open, uh, and I know Rich is going to say something about going into full screen mode, but I always like having this stuff here on the sidebar. Uh, <laughs> see, Rich, I know you. Uh, I actually could, um, in the spirit of, um, I'm just going to kind of do this actually, I'll make my screen. Thanks so wider. much. Yes. Wider. Not a problem. Uh, okay. So this is a little bit easier to see anyhow. Uh, and so we've got a group is there nothing in the group, but we also want this group to go full height, right? I mentioned, uh, top to bottom, just so that when you have a, a screen, you have the, so you don't have like, you know, part of the screen showing, and then it's all white below it. And so what we're going to do here is um, in the group settings down here where it says minimum height, you can set that to 100 VH, which is 100 uh, viewport height. So if I were to hit update and go back to now, we've got a full height thing. So this is the start of it. Uh, and so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to do a few things like uh, create, yeah, let's do an image. I'm going to add an image sort of, I've got some some things laying around here. Uh, so this is the Frost logo. And so in this presentation, uh, I'm going to do this. And so I want to center my logo because that's how I want to have this designed. Uh, so I've got the image centered. And uh, below that logo, I'm going to add another image. And we're going to call this. Frost screenshot. And what I forgot to add was the heading, which is welcome to my presentation about building a slideshow with it's, it's the first time I've done this in a while where I've spelled everything correctly. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go back to the, the group. So using list view, this is a great suggestion. Uh, I want to just go ahead and make everything white in there so I don't have to individually set all these things to, to white. So I'm going to go and set the color text to white. And what I'm also going to do is move this up and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And what I also want to do is inside of the content area of this group, we have this option over here to the right that says inner blocks to use content with. And so right now it's being constrained to 640 pixels, which is the defined content width from Frost. Uh, maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger. Maybe I don't want this to be three lines. And so I might do something like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and update my screen and we're going to see what things look like. And because I'm OCD, I'm going to make this bigger. Oops. Let's do 960. I want this on two lines. There we go. And this image feels a little bit too big to me. So I'm going to just go ahead and let's just say, I'm going to make this 600 pixels wide and I'm going to center the image. So we update the screen and there we go. Uh, obviously we've got a little bit of spacing uh, things that we have going on here. So I'll just go in and uh, address that. I will go to this heading, I'm going to go to dimensions, margin, and there's a couple of different ways you can do spacing. You can add a spacer block in between these if you want. Uh, I generally don't like the extra markup, and so uh, I will do this. Oops, margin bottom. I want to add a little bit more there, and maybe even the same on top. Like that's too much. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So this is sort of, you know, maybe this is an opening um, slide. Maybe we'll make this bigger because 800 might feel better. Also, there we go. So if I'm building a presentation, so maybe I'm going to use this as my first slide. Uh, what I'm going to go do next is actually undo this because I'm going to add something to the bottom. 
Now, if you look up in my URL bar here, we've got workshop.local slash sample. And so this is the sample page it's using the slug. If I were to build, let's just say a five page presentation, um, I would probably do something like create another page with another one of these slides and then start to link them together. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what I'll, I'm gonna copy this just so I can easily uh, replicate it. So I'm gonna add a new page and I'm gonna call it slide number two. And I'm gonna put it under samples page. I'm gonna hit paste. And as a reminder, we're gonna go set the template to blank. And I'm gonna publish this and we'll have these sort of up here side by side. So we've got the first one and then slide two. Now, uh, going back to the first page, underneath the image, I'm going to add a paragraph because I just want to do some, or actually I'm going to use a button because those are nicer looking. So I, just for the sake of making it easy, I'm going to say next slide. And I will go over here to the right-hand side. And I'm going to use outline because I want it to, to be a little bit um, less conspicuous. I'm going to set the radius to zero. These are all uh, just little, you know, sort of nitpicky things you can do however you want. Uh, maybe I'll make that a little bit smaller. I like to uppercase things. So again, this is just a styling preference. And maybe the, I want to make this a little bit smaller from a padding perspective. Uh, perfect. And we, oops, wrong one. We want to there we go. We want to align this. Now, I'm going to do this, and we're going to say slide number two. That is not right. What did we call this? Slide number two uh, page. There we go. So if I hit update and we go back to this main page, you can see here now we've got all of this stuff. And if I click on this, that it goes, it's the same thing. That's why we see it again, but um, let's just make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna say, welcome to slide number two. And so that way, when we go back and see the presentation, so maybe you're doing your intro, you're talking about uh, what you're gonna showcase in your presentation. Welcome to my presentation. Let's start the slideshow. Then you do that and you go to the next slide. And so, uh, in this case, we've got uh, a, just a, a heading and an image, and likely we should do, I'm going to go back to sample so I can just copy my button. So I'm going to copy this block, and I know I'm going back and forth a little bit. I'm going to come back down here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to jump ahead, and I'm just going to change this to slide number three. And I will copy this content just to make it easy to duplicate it. And I'm going to add a new page. We're going to call it slide number three. And I'm just going to go here. I'm going to hit paste. We're going to change that. And I want to use my full page or my blank page template there. I'm going to publish this page. But the one thing I forgot to do is select the parent. And so I'll come back here. So this is what we've built so far. We've got the sample page, which is like the front page of your presentation. Then we started creating the slides underneath that as sub pages. So that way uh, we can do things like this. Here's the front page. We wanna go to the next slide. It takes us here. And now we're at slide number three. Uh, I have a sample here that I've got just using some text. I'm just gonna quickly make slide three a little bit different. We're gonna get rid of the image. We're gonna do some uh, paragraph and this feels a little bit too wide again, because in the group that we've got selected here on the high level, I'll go into list view. Uh, we had at the time selected 960, maybe I'll make that, now well, that's even 720. And so if I hit update, we'll see slide three now has some text. Um, and then lastly, this is the presentation I had done before. I'm just going to do this. 
because maybe slide two, we're going to open up with some code. So I'll just do welcome to slide two. I'm going to add some code instead of the image. And I will go to hit update. Laura, I see you have a question. I'll bounce back in a second. So we are back here to the presentation. And uh, first thing I'm going to show you is slide two, which is where I put some code. So like if you were going through and showing people uh, in this case, what is uh, one element of a black WordPress theme, which is the assets folder. Here you can see the different assets that come into a black theme. And so after that, uh, maybe there's a little bit of text. And then beyond that, let's just do one more for the sake of doing it. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to select all of this again. Slide number four. I'm going to paste it. Change my page template to blank sample. And I'm going to add a gallery because I've got some thumbnails here that are style variations of frost, which might look really nice on a thing like this. I'm going to kill this. And uh, going back to list view here, I want to change the number of columns we have here to four. And I will go ahead and hit publish. And then I need to link this properly in slide three, so the one before it. Uh, one person might be wondering, is there a way to auto-generate these links? Not really, so you do have to sort of manually do this. All right. Yeah, Steve just says the next post block. If these were posts, that that very much is true. Uh, you could potentially do that. You'd have to make sure the, the dates, the published dates were all proper, but uh, that could definitely be a way to do it. I'm going to back up here. And I'm going to copy the URL here just because I want to show you something in a second. And so here we go. So now we're going to look at the slide presentation. We've got slide two, which is your code. Next slide here is your text. And then if I click this, this takes me to my gallery. Now, one little trick that I learned a while back uh, was uh, if I wanted to start over or if I was done and wanted to go back to the beginning, uh, one quick way to do that is to make this image that's up here at the top sort of like um, a site logo. And so if I go into the sample slide and I click on the image, I have the ability to insert a link, which I paste. This is the sample link. Uh, so I'm just going to apply that and then I'll hit update. And then I've got the image selected. I'm going to copy this because I want to go to each of the slides and oops, and just just kind of copy and paste over it. And so what that does is it makes that a link on every page. Uh, so in one second, uh, yeah, it it could be a reusable block. It, you could just use the site logo instead, uh, depending on you know what it is. All right, so back to slide the main presentation. We're going to go here. We're going to go to the third one. We're going to go to the fourth one. Somebody asked a question and says, oh, can we start this over? Now, if you go up here, you can see that this logo is linkable, and it'll take you back to the sort of the starting point of the presentation. So uh, I could keep going. Uh, I don't think I need to. I think uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. I'll show a few sort of customization things here on this. Uh, and then I've got another trick to show afterwards, um, but I do want to go back and just make sure that any questions that were asked have been answered. Um, <laughs> I don't know how Laura does it, but she she does it. Uh, she does this every time we're on build mode too, by the way. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to omit her question for now. And there's a very specific reason. So are there any other questions uh, regarding what I've shown you so far? And as you put them into the chat, uh, I'll just pop open one of these slides and we'll we'll do a little bit of just customization on it um, just for fun. Uh, instead of using that background, if we wanted to just use one of the solid colors, we could easily do that. That's very easy to do. Uh, or maybe we wanted to just make this white, in which case we would then have to unset the text that we set to black. Um, this logo, uh, I do have a black version of it right here. So we could do this. Uh, and then this looks a little weird. And so maybe we want to use the image styling. Uh, we want to make that a five pixel border. Um, 
as well. And then maybe for whatever reason, we don't want to outline button. We want to do that. I'll just do a quick refresh and we can see what we've got. So now you've got a white version, uh, you know, which still then links to the next couple. So I don't see any questions. So I'm going to assume either that was relatively straightforward or um, everybody understands how that works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and go to my next trick, which is what Laura was alluding to, uh, because uh, having done a couple of these, I realized, well, if you have long presentations that are 10, 20, 30, 40 pages, those are a lot of WordPress pages. So when you go to your edit screen, you've got like a whole thing that's like slide one, slide two, slide three. And I was thinking, hmm, maybe there's a different way to do something like this. And you may have seen it when I kind of scrolled over to my sample. And I was like, well, actually, here's an interesting thing. And so I'm going to uh, undo this so that way we can go back to the original styling. I'm going to update this. And so I'm just going to actually build off of the one that's here. So I'm going to go back to uh, this sample. And instead of making them all pages, uh, what if you stacked them one on top of another? And I will pop this open so I have quick access to my other slides. And so I'm going to just copy this slide all together and go back to this. And I will just literally paste it down there. And I'm going to just do that with the other two pretty quickly. So I'm literally just uh, using list view, selecting the entire group, hitting copy, coming into this page, kind of down here at the bottom where there's empty, and then just hitting pasting, like Command-C, Command-V sort of style. Uh, and so let me just grab the last one. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and bring it down here to the bottom. So I'm going to hit update now, and let's just take a look and see what we've got. Now, keep in mind, every single group that we have here is all full height. And so the way we're seeing it on screen looks nice because uh, every slide is full height. Now, you might be wondering, well, it's kind of annoying to have to like use a mouse and scroll, and you want it to like look and transition well and whatnot. Uh, and this is also what Laura was alluding to. Uh, and so instead of linking to pages with these buttons, we're going to actually just link to sections on the page, uh, also known as anchor links. And we get to show off something else that's really cool with WordPress. Uh, so I'm going to go into list view here. And so uh, I'm just going to call this one slide two. So I'm going to select this group altogether. We're going to call this slide two. Uh, so if you go over here to settings under advanced, you'll see there is what's called HTML anchor, and that's where you can create an anchor link out of this. So if I just do something like slide dash two, I'm going to highlight this just to make it easy. Uh, and then I go down to the next one, I will paste, we'll call that slide three. Uh, and then similarly on this last one, going to go hit slide four. Uh, what we need to do now is change the links here, so we're just going to do uh, slide two. I believe that's going to work. Sometimes I, I never can remember if you should need to do a, a slash or not. Uh, we'll try it out here. So that's an internal page. Uh, so that that thing then links down here to section two, and then so similarly, we'll just go into each button and we'll call that slide. Oops, slide three internal and then last but not least we'll go down here and change this to slide dash four internal now something that's new to wordpress yeah thanks chuck i i get tripped up all the time sometimes when you're you're linking to uh these anchors like from on to a different page you you do need the slash uh, and that's why I often get confused. Now, when you use anchor links, you have this sort of these these notated as what those are. Uh, one thing that's really great about WordPress now is that uh, the ability to rename groups exist. And so I could come over to this group and I can rename this uh, slide number two. Uh, so for those who are familiar with like Figma or sort of prototyping design tools, there's a lot of like layers and things like that that this is now sort of emulating. So I'm just going to hit save, uh, and I'm just going to rename these just because I can, because WordPress is great and now allows me to do this. 
Uh, so imagine you have like 40 slides top to bottom. Uh, this is exceptionally helpful. Uh, it, it's kind of like an easy one in the way we're doing this because of the anchor links, because it actually shows up twice now. So imagine this slide two, three or four wasn't there uh, and you had a bunch of these here or you wanted to name them descriptively like gallery or whatnot, because I might think to myself, what is slide four? Uh, and so, um, so maybe we'll just do that since we've got all kinds of time on our hands. So we're going to do that. Uh, so slide two is code. So we'll just do it this way. This way, when I have a slide presentation that has a hundred slides, I can easily, this one, we'll just say text. And this was gallery. So this is a fun way to show off more of what WordPress has. All in WordPress core. Yes, that is correct. Uh, and there are other blocks that also can be renamed um, as well. So it's not just um, the group block, though the group block is the one that makes the most sense. So I'm going to update my screen. And um, what I'm going to say is that there's a little bit of code CSS that's in Frost that, a lot, that sort of defines transition behavior uh, that basically it kicks on the smooth scroll. So uh, when you click from an anchor position to a different anchor position, you'll see the screen, instead of just abruptly going down to that section, it, it does the scroll. It's like a two line CSS that is basically, I think it's HTML behavior, smooth scroll, or something like that. Uh, so the animation you see here is a result of that. So I'm back here on my slideshow. Um, I'm going to hover this and just make sure it looks good. Lower left-hand corner, you can see the URL. And so when I click that, it just scrolls down to the next slide. And I can talk about this. And when I'm done, it just keeps going on. And the beauty behind this is that maybe you, you know, like I do, uh, at least a workshop a month. And so if I had a website where I, I had a bunch of presentations, each one could have its own URL. Uh, so you can share this and it, it doesn't get complicated because you're not linking to like 30 different pages. And if you can imagine a slideshow that has 20 different slides and you do it 20 times a year, that's 400 WordPress pages. And then all of a sudden that becomes unmanageable. So the idea of doing this top to bottom uh, is very, very cool. And if you had a lot of good um, content, images, alt tags, text, and things like that, um, headings properly, maybe it's you know a content heavy piece or a slideshow, you might even be able to rank for it. Uh, Sam and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, another uh, way to use sort of this functionality, um, obviously it looks great here for a slideshow. Uh, maybe you're you want to send something to a client and you don't want to have to record a loom video or you want to give them some instructions or kind of like step by step, uh, like a manual, you could do something like this. You could password protect it. You can send it to hint them and say, you know, this is how you work with your site. This, you know, step one, do this step two, do that. And you can kind of use this sort of thing where you walk people through top to bottom, uh, different ways to do things. So yes, client proposals, manuals, um, slideshows, uh, anything like that. And so um, we do have plenty of time and I don't see a ton of questions, which is totally okay. Uh, yes, you can embed videos. You can grab YouTube links and show them on there. Uh, in fact, you could have a page called my YouTube, you know, and each one could just be like, you know, watch the next video. Like you could literally make a playlist, a uh, video playlist out of this if you wanted to guide people through a journey. Like, especially if it was like as a theme developer, you know, step one, watch this video, click down here to step two, and it scrolls down to the next section. Um, so Chuck asks, I missed this, but says the block handle full height width, or was that um, some custom script? No, let me, uh, there used to be custom scripting that I had to do to do something like that. Uh, but I'll go back here to the welcome. This is just a group block and the group block over here in the settings, if you scroll down has what's called the minimum height. And so you can set that to um, any of these things. Obviously, viewport height makes the most sense because um, that way it's just an, as you you know click through the transitions, it just fills your whole screen with the next slide. Uh, yeah, Sam, and you know you could get really tricky. Also, um, there's probably some ways to be creative here and to like have some sort of like a sticky header or something like that. Um, as well, there might be something there you could probably mess around with, but for the sake of just kind of keeping this simple, um, and most people will use it sort of in this sense, 
Um, maybe there's a, you know, some positioning and a little bit of custom CSS if you wanted, like in the lower left hand corner, sort of like a table of contents for your slides or something like that. If it was just a handful, uh, you could easily implement that too. So, uh, yes, progress bar across the top. That would be that would be fun too. So. And that's the presentation. This is, uh, as I think most things are now with WordPress, a lot easier than people think. Uh, and so you can, you know, Frost has a couple of little things here, like that transition, the smooth scroll transition that just makes this a little bit um, a better experience. But you could, you know, download 2024 theme. And because the settings are all there, you could do the same thing with 2024 because you can just create a group, set it 100, you know, viewport height. Um, and all of that. So Sam wants to see this. Well, while we have a captive audience, uh, shoot. Uh, one of the latest additions, and I just pushed out an update. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, a new pattern inside of Frost is a progress bars pattern, which allows you to creatively use uh, columns, background colors, and so forth to sort of emulate what we've seen. Uh, a lot of times people have like on their homepage, you know, this is, you know, my proficiency, I'm in Photoshop 100% and, you know, coder 80% or whatnot. Uh, yeah, Chuck, that's right. That's exactly what was used um, was the scroll behavior smooth. Uh, so the progress bar is just a one-click pattern. You can easily just add this in. Um, so for instance, and I'm not sure how this is going to look, but we're going to try. Let me just duplicate this bottom gallery. Going to knock the gallery out. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit the plus button, browse all patterns. And I want to say that's a, f yep. There you have it. So I'm going to update this and we're just going to just see how this looks. Oops, that's the individual one. Hang on a second. Y'all view the page. Yeah. So maybe there's a something you're trying to show like to a client, hey, this is the the progress of the, the project. Phase one instead of item one is uh, fully complete and so on. Uh, and also, since we're here, uh, I'll list view the pattern for the progress bars. So basically I'll highlight so we can see what we're looking at. Let me go to one that's like this. Uh, so each one of these is a column and so, or a set of columns. And so inside each one, this side is set to 80%. This side is set to 20%. Obviously, you know, inside of that, you can just set the background color to the column. I think I added a spacer in there or maybe, yeah, a spacer to just give it the visual height. You know, you could, mess around with it uh, and stuff like that. So, and link to the slide titles offset to show the top of the slide. We'll see how that works. Da, 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 da. Just reading Peter's thing. Uh, so there's a little bit of extra you get here in this workshop, things that are kind of nifty and neat around WordPress and the world of Frost. Uh, but again, you can, you know, insert and create a slideshow with some of these patterns in no time at all. And so, uh, let's just do one more example of a slide just because. So I'm going to go, I'm going to just duplicate this one. Another way to build with WordPress is to do this. Just going to add columns. Uh, we'll go 50, 50. I'll clean this up in a bit. So what I'm going to do, nope, not upload. I'm sorry. Let's just select pink because that's my favorite color here. So I'm just going to do a quick kind of dump of the, these things. Uh, and maybe I want this to be a little bit wider. So I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to hit update and we can see. So if you have just another layout is something like this, that's a column. But maybe we need to give this some context. So we'll call this headline. We're going to transform that paragraph to a heading. And we're just going to quickly make that bigger. And I'll show you one more nifty thing about columns. Um, so you, so columns here, you got 
uh, you don't like the way this looks, and maybe you want this content here on the left centered vertically so it doesn't look quite as weird. Uh, if you go here to list view on columns, and then right here, there's the alignment. It's set to both columns align top, but if you select middle, you'll see that went down. And what that does is centers the, the stuff that's in this column vertically. And so, you know, obviously we'll, we'd want to do some spacing cleanups and stuff like that, or you could offset, you know, the width of these things to make them better. But this is sort of an interesting way of kind of combining the ability to build with blocks into the slide presentation. So I see some comments. Let's just look them through. There is a question about mobile, like seeing it on mobile. Uh, yes, that's a good one. Uh, I see Chuck as I'm scrolling down. Frost is a standalone theme. Um, let's, I'll just toss this in there. So this is, it's on the wordpress.org theme repository. Uh, you can view that down here. There's a, a link to GitHub. You can contribute if you see anything. Uh, and so going back to the question on mobile, I'm going to pull this out and we'll do... So let me get rid of this behind there. There we go. Uh, so obviously this is still at 100% viewport height on mobile. So generally speaking, you know, paragraphs respond well. In this case, this is that set of columns. So the columns stack one on top of another. Uh, and in this case, the slide, the gallery splits uh, from four columns down to two columns. And so that looks nice and neat. And so even the progress bars look pretty good uh, as well. So uh, so Sam, your question, vertically align in group. Are you talking about if you wanted the content inside of that to like center top to bottom? Yeah, especially on mobile. So there's not that big gap on the bottom. Yeah, it, you know, ideally there'd be a way, and at some point maybe there might be, I hope Rich, you're listening, uh, you know, where there's that 100% viewport minimum height, like maybe an option to only only do that on desktop kind of thing. Uh, it, you could very easily create CSS that sort of removes that. Uh, or, and and I tried to fight with this earlier. Uh, I, I want to say, and I, I, I spent... I did, let me go to a different slide. Let's see if we could do this live because um, let's do, let's do this con, no, sorry, one more time. Let's do this. So I want to see, and I know you can do this because the, um, the link page pattern that exists in Frost actually does that. It, it goes full with height. Uh, and I want to say that it, is transforming the group to bear with me all as I try to figure this out. Um, maybe it's this. No, I think you have to. Um, I got too many tabs open. <laughs> uh, no, let's see. Let me just go back to the original. Let's go slide. Anyway, I think it's possible. Usually if you train and you have to do it with like the right combination of settings, you can transform it to a row or a stack and then align things a little bit differently. And it should do that. Uh, what I'll show you here is the, I've talked about this a few times, uh, the link page pattern in Frost. Uh, if you go add a pattern and come down here uh, and assign this, the blank template, like I said, I'm going to just go ahead and publish this on my local so we can see what we're talking about here. So this is the link page here. And as you can see, um, top to bottom, it aligns vertically. And so if I go back to this, I've transformed this group into a row. And then you have to do like center, justify center, because if, oh, it's, maybe it's the orientation. Again, it's a little bit tricky, uh, but it is possible so that you can align this properly. <laughs> Catching up on Peter's comments. 
Uh, yeah, the reality is, um, especially with some of the way these slides get populated, like that gallery block, the 100% viewport height on mobile is somewhat moot only because uh, likely that content will span taller than the phone is anyways. And so that's why I usually wrap that group with top and bottom pad em, uh, pad padding. That way, when it, it, it's bigger than, if you forget to do that, uh, if your content goes more than the 100% uh, viewport height, then there's no padding on the top and it literally will sit at the top of that section and that looks bad. So um, that is the case for that. Let's just look through the uh, the questions. Uh, yes, also though, Sam, we, we could very easily take that group and convert it to a cover block, in which case it makes it easier to take that content and set it at top, bottom, left, right corners and stuff like that. So uh, as you often say, there's many ways to WordPress. Uh, and so you could do things different ways. And similarly, because Rich is about to point this out, uh, instead of using the cover block, if you had like a background image that you wanted to use, uh, you could use the group block because the group block now supports background images. So. I see a couple people jumping, Brian. So I have a poll I wanted to ask. Obviously, we're not done yet, but I'm just going to drop that uh, in Zoom real quick. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'll, uh, I, you know, we're. We're all set here again. Uh, this gets published on our YouTube channel, so it'll be very easy to kind of go back and, you know, pause and watch what I do and how I've done it and all of that. So feel free. Today's Wednesday. I should have that on our YouTube channel by the end of this week for sure, uh, if not tomorrow. So that'll be on there. So feel free to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and be notified when that content goes up. I use WordPress blocks for every project, so I'm going to actually... Because I learned and not. <laughs> I'm going to skew the results. Any other questions uh, regarding uh, what I showed you today uh, regarding the um, presentation? And and if not, uh, we do have some extra time. I'll stop the recording now. Um, Give it a little bit of a pause. So anything from this point on, yes, thanks, Chuck. Always good to see you, my friend. Uh, anything from this point on, I'm going to stop sharing screen and um, we can talk candidly around just WordPress stuff. This is uh, for those who want to stick around, feel free. If you need to drop off, that's totally fine. The presentation itself is done. Yeah.